Howdy folks, it's Meandering Mike in the Man Cave of Madness. It is the middle of the evening and we are returning to our um, initial look at uh, Santiago campaign. Uh, we're going a little more over the rules. We're going to do uh, a partial little bit of playthrough. Like I've said before, I'm not going to do full entire turns, entire game playthroughs. It just takes way too long. <laughs> so they're going to be you know, shorter segments. Last time was 30 minutes, but we were ranting and rambling about the rules. We'll do that some more. Yay. Um, so first thing I want to point out here is here's the errata. Um, and, uh, you know, some of them are just stuff that they just should have caught. It's not big deals, but it's, it's just confusing things that easily, easily could have been caught in the rules. Uh, one of the very critical, important parts. I'm going to zoom up here, get a little closer. So this question four here about do you all do defensive fires and then the shock? Um, like all defensive fires and then all shock? Or do you do a defensive and a shock, defensive and a shock? And it says it's the latter. The sequence of play is totally, totally not written that way. Totally. Um, and <laughs> it gets even worse when we look at question number seven. Now, uh, I think I mentioned before somewhere, maybe it was just on a comment hmm, on Board Game Geek in the thing, but answer number seven, question number seven is different in the errata than in the response on Board Game Geek to the initial post of the person posting a bunch of questions. So if you look and you see on Board Game Geek that list of questions, don't stop there. Get the errata, download it, print it, and look at number seven. Because this is super, super critical. I'm going to move this here a little bit. Tilt that more. All right. So please clarify fire and defensive fire. Now, in the rules, if you read it, there appears to be no such thing as offensive fire. And I, I made this comment. Uh, let's see. I guess I need to pull back a little bit to get the whole thing in there. There we go. Now we can zoom in a little more and try to keep it all in. All right. So <laughs> the way it sounds like in the rules is... In the particular player turn, like for the, the Cubans and the U.S. move in the same turn. The Cubans do their movement first, the Americans do their movement, and then you should do your, technically your Cuban attacks one at a time, fully resolving them, and then your U.S. attacks one at a time. And then the Spanish player gets their turn, they do their movement, and then they go around doing their attacks. Now, when you do combat, you're normally, you're supposed to choose one hex that you want to attack, declare how many of the adjacent stacks. Now, in these rules, they declare a stack is two or more units. And otherwise, a unit alone in a hex is just a unit. But that's really a st silly distinction. There's nothing that one unit that a stack units can't do. I mean, so to me, always, a stack of units is one or more units. I mean... There, there, there are some games that maybe there's a reason why there's something that a stack can do that a single unit can't. Or, you know, if, if you want a stack to move together, they all have to start together. So there's things like that. But this, this rule, this game doesn't do that. But uh, So sometimes the phrasing is awkward. But I'm going to say a stack. So, so one or more... Stacks, heck, units in one or more adjacent hexes can attack, choose one hex to attack. You can't have one hex attack two, but you can have one, two, three, four, attack one. So you declare one one of those attacks. Now, you can never have units attack, attack more than once. Now, it doesn't say that in a hex that if there's a stack of units... 
this is this case the stack plural two or more units that you know one can attack over here and then you can do a separate attack over there it doesn't seem to be disallowed okay um but we'll, we'll come back to that <laughs> so as as written in the rules which are i gotta be careful here because there's units underneath there these rules as written you you pick where you're going to attack the defender shoots defensive fire back. Now, if they have multiple units in the defensive hex, they may add up to shoot at one attacking hex, or they can split up and shoot at multiple ones. And given the way the defensive fire table is set up, for example, if you had a one fire strength unit and a two fire strength unit, adding them together is three you might as well have a one strength shoot at one hex and a two at another one if there's multiple hexes, because then you'd have a chance to get a dis dis. It's supposed to, on here it says disorganized in the rules. In one place they refer to it as disrupted, so there's confusion there. Is it disrupted or is it disorganized? Dis dis. Uh, I would normally say disruption. If you've played other games that use disorganized, like uh, a DG result in OCS or whatnot, but um, in any case, uh, you, as the defending player doing your defensive fire, if you have a, multiple guys, you can decide to have them all add together, or you could have like two add to shoot at one hex and one another. It all depends on how many hexes the attacker is attacking from. You can split it up as you like, and you calculate each one its own modifiers, and you'd roll, okay? To actually cause step loss, you need a bonus unless you're, you know, up pretty high number of combat factors. Um, then, according to the rules, what comes next is the shock, where you add up the attacking shock factors versus the defending shock factors as an odd ratio. And this disorganized result says the attackers may not attack during shock. So if, if you had three hexes attacking one and they say tried to shoot at two of the hexes and maybe got a, a dis on one, that hex's factors could not add in and only the other ones could hit. So you're 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 doing, you know, covering fire, you're screening, they're 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 taking cover and hiding or whatever, and they're just not able to to uh, get their uh, effective force into the, the battle. Now Okay, that being said, <laughs> that's totally what it sounds like, that there's no offensive fire, there's only offensive shock, there's defensive fire on this table, the shock table's down below here, odds ratio, and again, you ignore the 7 and 8, because it's odds shifts, that shouldn't have been there. But, but, <laughs> according to this errata, please further clarify, it's like, oh, no, what's what's <laughs> titled defensive should be fire and defensive fire. In other words, it should be called fire table. <laughs> and it's used for for both? For both what? Well, <laughs> there is no separate defensive fire phase. Well, that's what it's called in the sequence of play. So they're saying, no, there's a fire phase. <laughs> the defending player gets to shoot first. And then down here, the attacker player gets to shoot and then there's also shock okay nowhere in here does it sound like the attacking player shoots on the fire table but according to this they do all right so they totally totally need to rewrite the sequence of play integrating this into it explaining how there's these you know cycles where you do an attack and you do defensive and offensive fire and then shock, which could be called off, right? Um, the the rule in here, <laughs> if, if all the attackers are disorganized, obviously they can't attack. But regardless, if if even if they're not disorganized, let's see where it is in here. So in shock combat, I'm going to zoom out. Okay, there's this line here. Oh, there's too much clear there. Note, 
The results... The results of defensive fire in a battle may make the attack player want to call off his shock attack. That is allowed. <laughs> well, regardless of the results, it is allowed to call off your attack. You may potentially attack a hex intending never to do the shock combat. You might just be wanting to hit it with your offensive fire. Um, now, mm, yes, you might. Now, the, 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 the thing is, the odds of getting a damage on here are very light. Most of the results, most likely, is a disorganized. It explicitly says, dis marker, those that are affected by the dis marker may not attack or advance. Attack. Now, if you think, well, wait, if, what if the attacking player hits the defending player and gets a dis? Shouldn't that mean they have no strength? In, this, in the shock? Well, if that were the case, it'd have a zero, and any attacking, one divided by zero, this is an odd ratio, one divided is infinite. Do they instantly kill anybody? Okay, well, the, the, the shock is down here, right? Odds ratio, right? But you divide by zero, it's infinite. <laughs> you know, in a computer, it's error or undefined. In the math world, divide by zero is infinite. So does that mean they automatically go to five to one odds, or you just automatically kill them, or... Well, no, if you, and it's going to get, it's not explained here, but if you go technically, the disrupting effect only stops the attacker from attacking. Technically, it's no effect against the defender. The defender, you know, he's, when the offensive fire there, he's trying to get a step loss, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, by weakening the guy, he's you have a better chance in your shot combat. Maybe there's only one step in there and you eliminate it and there's no shot combat. Now, you could easily think of, well, maybe let me write a rule that if the defender is disrupted, do I have their strength or give them one odd shift? Because this is odd shifts here, right? So you could certainly come up with the rule that says, oh, getting a dis result, disorganized or disrupted, against the defender by the offensive fire could, should maybe have a benefit or maybe not. It's like, okay, this is to stop the incoming attacker. doesn't really do anything against the defenders. They're keeping their head down. You know, the attacker is going to pile in there and get into close combat, shot combat. And at that point, they're going to, the defenders are going to fight. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't screened them out. It's not like they're stunned or something, you know, in some like a, role-playing combat system, whatever. Um, so I, I'm going to play it <laughs> as a mix of, well, okay, the attacker does get offensive fire, and then there's a shock phase. But according to this result, the DIS only affects the attacker. Okay? <laughs> but see, this is... This is <sighs> This is only written from the perspective, really, of the attacker being hit by defensive fire. And this says, well, no, that's not the case. So, again, way, way, way underdeveloped. Now, I've, I've, I'm, I'm, we're at 13, almost 14 minutes here. We're rambling up. But this is critical, right? This, is, this totally changes the flavor of the game. The fact that, oh, it's not just defensive fire, then shock. It's defensive fire, offensive fire, and shock. Um, and... That, that whole idea of maybe you want to just shoot offensive fire and not shock really comes into play when you look at artillery units. I'm going to show you these guys. Now, artillery have crappy shock ones. Three on uh, the attack there. I believe there's a Spanish, uh, or maybe it's a, no, it's a, yeah, it's a, mm, was there a Spanish one that had like a four string? I can't remember. But uh, there's there's a rule about artillery, and that is in shock combat. If you if, you, if you're using an artillery, you have a one in six chance of causing a friendly casualty. So so <laughs> for shock, they only add in one. I mean, you'd be desperate to add an artillery when you attack for the shock value that it might 
put you up in odds, you know, just for an extra point or two, but then having a 1-6 chance, you're going to lose a step because of your own artillery. Now, that friendly fire also applies for the navies. The, there's a single U.S. Navy counter and the Spanish Navy counter. These are with five strength points of support in, in a shock battle. Um, and uh, they cause it causes friendly fire too. But, so like I was saying, you may have a stack with a bunch of these artillery in it, and you decide to attack the guy with like, I don't really want to shock him. I want to have a chance to do some damage. So, you know, maybe you have, you know, a couple of guys with a two strength, uh, firepower, and then, you know, three of these. So four, nine, 13. So you're going to be up here. And so there's only a one in six chance they're rolling a six, but let's say you have your leader, Teddy Roosevelt there. He's adding one. So that's a five and, you know, six. Chance. Maybe you want to just shoot and have a chance. Um, five or six, adding one. Or maybe you're on top of a hill, firing at someone not on a hill. That's a plus one. Or for the U.S., they have their signals detachment, which also in place in the rule is called the balloon unit. Um, you know, I mean, it's this signals detachment balloon reconnaissance is what the unit is. Um, but in some places they call it the balloon unit. Sometimes they call it the signals detachment. Uh, but it gives a plus one. You know, if if you're next to or or in the hex, you know, it says adjacent to or in the hex. I'm assuming I'm going I'm to play it that way. It's ridiculous to to say it has to be only adjacent, not in the same hex. Um, so you potentially could use your artillery just i'm doing a bombardment you know <laughs> i don't want to go necessarily go in and shock maybe you decide to go ahead and shock and risk the one six chance like oh i got i did get a hit or something on him i mean potentially if you're up here you can get two uh step losses uh yeah can you see that yeah um so b bombardment's a possible tactic where you may not intend to shock but you might end up shocking anyway so so you must download the ready. You must look at number seven. You must read that. So between uh, number four up here, where you, you do one battle at a time, you do the defensive fire, and, and here it doesn't mention it, but then on the offensive fire, then the shock, this dispensive defensive and shock. <laughs> but Oh, by the way, <laughs> so defensive fire, offensive fire, shock. Go to the next unit, defensive fire, offensive shock. And so in the American term, they do all their Cubans, and then they do all their their U.S. guys, um, but within within those you you loop. You don't go you, Cuban, you know, declare your tax. All the Spanish do defensive. All the Cubans do offensive. Then the Cubans do all their shock. That no, not like that. It's like it's the Cuban part of the U.S. turn. Pick one battle, fully resolve it. Next battle, fully resolve it. Next battle, fully resolve it. And again, the sequence play is not written that way. And they totally should have. The part of the errata should be, oops, we fucked up. Let's rewrite. Let's make a card that, that has, you know, the correct sequence of play with the correct description on it. Let's put the correct charts on it with get rid of this gobbledygook, you know. <sighs> Compass Games is usually quite good about, you know, fixing counters and, and things like that. But with this magazine game, they just dropped the ball and they didn't do anything to other than oh, we posted some errata and they really, really should have <laughs> corrected this puppy. <laughs> um, so enough ranting about that. <laughs> so it's very important though, that that's, that's how we're playing it. That's how, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're playing by the errata and the interpretation that the disorganized, the dis only affects the attacker. All right, so get these out of the way. Those are future reinforcements. So I'm going to... Uh, let's go to the actual play here. I'm going to zoom in. So we did our Cuban moves, right? So now technically the next thing would be to, to do the U.S. moves. You should do all the movement first. Well, the U.S. are landing. So that was there. 
So you can land 12. That's kind of fuzzy out of focus, isn't it? There. Um, 12 steps a turn. Fortunately, the <clears throat> beachhead slash U.S. supply net slash logistical base marker. So most of the places in the rules, they refer to it as a logistical, logistical base marker. Uh, in some spots, it's called the, the, the beachhead unit. And in the question that the person asked and the, the, the developer answered, they called it the U.S. supply unit. And he didn't correct this. Oh, you mean the logistical base marker? The thing that says beachhead? Yeah, it's the U.S. supply unit. Uh, now, that takes up six steps worth. So stacking is six units. This doesn't count against stacking. A leader doesn't. The signal attachment doesn't. So it can only land 12. So that was six. One, two, three, four, five, six, plus the leader, plus the signal attachment. So I tried to go for the the best shock units. These are the best that the U.S. has at the start. Those fives. Uh, this cavalry is one of their, for, for one step, I wanted to bring this machine gunner on because it's four points of fire strength. So between these two one-step units, they're getting five firepower and he's at a three and he has a one. So I figured that was a good combination and the signal detachment plus Teddy, you know, they can get good, good some good bonuses firepower if the... Uh, so we're landing in Daiquiri. We'll put that on the bottom. That's not going to move. All right. They don't get to move that first turn. All right. They just land. So the, the, the turn that either it's land, they don't get to move. They don't get to fight, even if they're next to somebody. So there's a whole question is, yeah, do these. Let's see. Let's go zoom out. Do the Spanish want to charge forward? Now, the answer is yes and no. They probably don't want to fight in the open. They want to fight where they have defensive bonuses. Um, however, there's a good reason for them to rush forward, and we will get to it. I'm going to, I'm going to mention it now before we get to... No, wait. We'll, 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 we'll do the Cuban attacks, and then uh, I'll, I'll... I'm probably not going to do the whole Spanish turn, but I'll, I'll talk about this maneuvering okay so i'll probably won't do the spanish potential counterattacks over here uh because depending on what happens with this cubans here i might want to think a, a while about what the spanish is going to do and i don't want you to you sit there stuck listening so we're already up to 23 minutes but let's actually do this now okay so the plan is to try to take santiago um Secondary plan, trying to kill this guy, take this uh, spot here. Uh, I really don't think these guys want to attack. Now, if they don't attack, there's no defensive fire back against them. <laughs> there's, there's nothing that says the defender gets to shoot at anything next to him. It's the defender shoots at someone who's attacking him. And tacking is optional. So if you don't get attacked, you don't get to do defensive fire in the other person's turn. So I think the idea was here just to take this, to squat here, see what happens with this. And uh, yeah, certainly not here with the leader. Well, let's do a quick calculation. <laughs> With six shock, these guys have 11. Yeah, see, there's they, they, don't, they can't even get a one-to-one. -one. Uh, so if they had done something different, they could have used two. They could have tried to get a two-to-one. But with uh, the... Mm, that's entrenchments, right? <laughs> yeah, redoubts the triangle. So that's entrenchments. Entrenchments is a one-shift, two-to-one, back down to one-to-one. One to one is horrible, absolutely horrible. You cannot damage the enemy, <laughs> so you will never 
never attack at one to one. I mean, if you have if you have net shifts, if you have net shifts, you know, you might do it. But remember, these things down here don't exist. This is seven and eight. There are no die roll modifiers for shock combat, only shifts. So a net one to one, you would never attack at. Never, ever, ever. There's no purpose. You can always call off, you know, like if you were hoping that your offensive fires, so they could attack. So we, we, they had over here, he has a three, they'd be shooting on this one, they can't kill anything. Well, actually they're technically, they're shooting into a guy in a, in, in a readout. So, so, nah. Attacking from a strong defensive place, even though you're coming across into their hex, it's kind of weird. Against units in, yeah, yeah. wow, this is, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, let's, let me not go there right now. So technically, he would be shooting three firepower against him, having a readout effect, which is minus two. <laughs> <laughs> can't can't do anything at all and they're shooting four back against an entrenchment so the entrenchment subtracts one so four minus one they could actually roll a six to get a five but again okay, i can't see what i'm pointing at four minus one technically the disorganized should only affect the attacker now if if say the disorganized result have the defender, then three, six to three, eleven, he'd have a three to one on the odds table down here, shifting down with two. He actually could do a damage and cause a step loss, but you know, they're gonna lose one back for certain. So if there was a defend an effect against the defender when the attacker got a DIS, you might want to actually attack in that situation, but here we don't. <laughs> So we'll have to see how this plays. But the way I read that chart, which again, there's other things at the over, and I'm going to have to ask, you know, oh, dear developer, what is, what is the effect of a disc in your offensive fire phase? Um, you know, are you going to make something up now that shows that you never play tested it? I'm sorry, that's, I'm sure someone actually play tested it, but at what state, how much? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, folks. All right, so let's go beyond that. Let's actually do the combat. So uh, da, da, da. let's see, make sure we get enough of a view there. Come a little closer. So there is an entrenchment there. Now, uh, city. Uh, uh, hill town. It's town or city for the shock. Um, in terms of when they, they get to shoot, mm, 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 there is no DRM. So there's there's entrenchment, but there's no there's no town. So so entrenchment is minus one. Um, but the shock is you know they've got like these guys here by themselves eleven fifteen. That's seven to one. All right. So that's on the five to one cable shifted down one to the four to one. So if we look at that, so just those three guys there. Uh, yeah, 10, 15, seven to one. So it's that five to one shift down one. They're guaranteed to kill it. Cause remember you're no die modifier there. It's only a one, one step unit. They're going to kill it now. The uh, defender doing his defensive fire could get lucky over here because he could say, I'm going to shoot this stack. I only got one firepower. Oh, no. See, this is crazy. This, this is a redoubt. So they are coming from a redoubt square. So they actually have two bonuses. So there's no way that he can disrupt them. He could disrupt these guys. He could shoot, and with one firepower, he could roll a six and disrupt this guy. So it would only be 11, which is still five to one, shifted down to four to one. So so basically, 
these guys attacking. Uh, yeah, let's see here. I'll attack with all of them. He doesn't. Have, they could. They could leave like one guy out here and advance in with those, or they might want to go with and everything. But anyway, th this stack is not needed because <laughs> hmm, defensive fire. These guys are in the hex with the redoubt, but they're attacking. Right? So to me, it's like if you're offensive firing from here to here, they would have the redoubt defense. But if these guys are coming in to attack. It's like you should be able to offensive fire without them having any bonus. Does that make sense? Um, so, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe, I mean, I guess, like, in the jungle, like, jungle to jungle, you're going to get close. You're going to come up and go, boom, you're going to get it right on them, right? There's there's no, no, you know, the, the sight range that just makes sense. But, you know, between <laughs> attacking from here where there's a redoubt, to here. Now, there's only an entrenchment on this side here, but nowhere in the rules does it say you've got to be attacking from across the hex side that the entrenchment's facing. That might be realistic. You know, this guy over here, can you see that? Up? Yeah, you can see that this is facing all directions, but it doesn't say, so either, well, maybe they intended that, but it's certainly not in the rules. Not that I saw. There's no, there's no facing, no, no discussion, <coughs> you know, the position of the entrenchments. It's just, hey, that's an entrenchment hex. There is an entrenchment. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Yes, there's an asterisk on the terrain chart over here for some of these. And it says... The initial all Spanish control, they generate their effects for both sides if they change their control status. And uh, it just says, in entrenchment hexes. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a little problematic to me, but, um, so let's do it, let's do it. So let's do this attack first and then we'll do this one. Uh, so he's declaring this attack. He's defensive firing. According to the rules, there's a readout in this hex. He would have to add two, so he's not. He's going to shoot at this one. We're going to try to see if we can see if we can see that. There's a five over there with one is nothing, right? So if if he had if he was on a hill shooting in a non-hill, he'd get a bonus. That's not a hill. Uh, it's a town, but uh, here. Um, so he doesn't disorganize that. So he can advance. He does get to participate. 11, 15, versus 2, 7, 7 to 1. On the 5 to 1 column, one shift down to a 4 to 1. Of course, he's going to kill him automatically, but we're, we'll roll. Oh, he rolled the 1. So he only kills one string. Now, if that was a 3 to 1, on a three to one, he would fail. He would the attacker would lose one. He would not have succeeded. So the fact that he had a four to one, so the very first turn, the Cubans dive into Santiago. So again, I'm I'm calling a problem with the historical setup. The historical setup of the the Cubans and what the Cubans can do. Um, I don't think. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. I've not read the article yet. I don't know. Maybe the Cubans on the first day charged in and took over Santiago and had to fight three take I don't think so. But uh, <laughs> uh, so 10, 10, 10 is pretty big. Do we want to hmm, we try to hold it and then split off later? So that's the thing is well. He'll come in and, and occupy that if they don't. Uh, so we are going to just come in with these. Now, <laughs> technically, technically, there's there's a rules issue here on the way the advance after combat rules are written. 
I'm going to re read them to you. If all defending units in a battle are eliminated or forced to retreat, all attacking units may enter the newly vacated hex. Let's see here. Look at that glare off of there. No movement phase costs are involved. All attacking units may enter the newly vacated hex. Now, I don't read that as... If you advance, you must advance with all attacking units. I read it as all attacking units have the option. They may advance into the hex. Now, all of them that are not disorganized. We already know that disorganized specifically says you may not attack or advance in shot combat. So we already know that, you know, some units may and some units may not. And they're saying all units may. And I'm going to interpret that as all the units have the option to advance or not. Not you may advance, and if you do so, all. Because that is the correct way to write the rule if that's what you mean. I mean, it's, that's that's. <sighs> I've written enough rules, <laughs> and I've read enough rules to know you have to eliminate amb ambiguity. And uh, this is a poor choice of words. That makes it ambiguous. You could you could say no. It says they all may, and you the all is more important than the may. But I I read it as all of the attack units have permission to advance, not that they all must if you advance. So so anyway, let's continue here with the Cubans. They're gonna try to baz this dude here. This guy's get to shoot. Uh, see there. They've got to shoot here because, again, they only have one strength of firepower. Uh, this guy's out in the open. This is not a hill. These guys, they are in a redoubt. They took this redoubt. The fact that all these empty redoubts could have just been run into at the beginning is ridiculous, but uh, it is what it is. So he's going to shoot here and try to see what he can do. I'm going to switch dice. I like to mix dice up five, but it's only one. He, need, he would have needed a six without a bonus. So again, he didn't do that. So, oh, actually, did I, I? I forgot. I went straight to the shock before. They 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 could have killed the unit without the shock before. I didn't roll to see if the six shooty factors could have done something, but they couldn't because six. You need at least a plus one to do damage, and they were getting a minus one for the. Oh, that's right. No, <laughs> town. Doesn't have any minus, but it's an entrenchment, right? Yes, it's an entrenchment. So, so yeah, there's no way that six <laughs> with a minus one, you would need to get sixteen factors or more with a minus one, rolling a six and have a five to actually do anything with offensive. Wow, sixteen. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely need those pluses. You need that stack with Teddy Roosevelt and the, the signal detachment unit. Yeah. All right, so the shock because <laughs> they, they they've got six here six is not going to do anything this guy's actually going to redoubt that's even worse okay so so this they have a little more uh strength in their shock they've got 17 here 17 to one but the max you can get is five to one right it's five to one or greater all right and it's the the uh, shifts now. I want to. I want to. I actually have technique, and I'm not, I'm not sure. I gotta go read the rules here. They just say one error, one R. Um, number of no with the shifts. Where's the shifts? Shot coming cumulative. One error, one R. Yes, they don't even say they don't even say here what this is that those are shifts. So you got to got to read in the rules. They've got number with retreats, possible retreat, but this one R is not the same as this one R. A one R here means one loss in the retreat. A one R means one shift to the right. So a leader on defense helps you in shock. Everything else is to the right. 
this way <laughs> to the left, all the defensive train or the leader in the defense. Uh, but it doesn't even say here. But what I is, is that odds reductions, like, you know, by one odds, or does it say column shifts? Because that makes a difference. Because if you had 7 to 1 or 20 to 1 or 11 to 1, the defense doesn't help you if you say, oh, I had 12 to 1 and I go down 3, I'm at 9 to 1, and that's still 5 or greater. Versus, oh, no, 5 to 1 is the max, and then go down from there. Uh, the defense would be, you would you would never, ever want to defend with just single little units. And you had no choice in the historical setup here. So again, it's it's kind of crazy talk. So let's go back to shock combat. Maybe modified shift to left or right on that table. For determining the final odds column. But it still doesn't <laughs> initially calculated shock odds. Initially calculated shock common odds may be modified, shifted left or right on that table. All right, so you you locate yourself on the table. So it's not a reduction in the numerical number of the odds. It shifts on the table. So if you're at 20 to 1, anywhere between 5 to 1, 21, 100 to 1, doesn't matter. You're on this column, and then you shift. Okay. Which is actually a good thing because, yeah, <laughs> it would be too too powerful to just say those are a reduction of a single odds. Um, so back to where we were here. <laughs> it's 12, 17 to 1. So that's the 5 to 1 column, but then two shifts down because of the redoubt. So it's the three to one column. So the attacker will take a loss. And if their one is rolled, the defender survives. This is a one step unit. So he does not get to survive. He's gonna he's gonna die unless they roll a one. So you're ready, here we go. Six! <laughs> they would have done three losses up to three steps. So, boom, this guy dies. And the Kuban is going to take a loss. Um, and, um, and, um, I think, let's see. Oh, they're only one step. So he's taking a whole loss. Um, yeah, let's lose the, the, the five. Wait, see it there. Uh, so he's going to lose this five, and then this guy's going to advance into there. So this is a nice spot, cutting the 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 rail out this way. You know, if if they ever manage to get their supplies, or right now these are all cut out of supply, right? <laughs> so we can kind of kiss this whole game behind. Say so you 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 can't play historical setup without some changes. Um, Because, you know, we, we pretty much, this was a guarantee. There was there was uh, uh, only one shift here, so you you can four to one and get it. And this one here is, you know, well, it's just another space. It's not a big deal, but it was a one in six chance that that could survive. Uh, so, yeah, he's not going to do anything. That's it. That's the Cubans. <laughs> now, there was losses on both the Spanish side and the Cuban side. <clears throat> Americans, you must keep track of U.S. casualties. There's a set of markers here. You use the turn track because U.S. casualties, as they mount up, the U.S. are going to be forced to withdraw. And, and, oops, I just got knocked. Okay. Um, Yellow fever starts kicking in. Was it turn four or turn five? I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, yellow fever starts happening both through the Spanish and the U.S. The Cubans don't roll. Uh, the Spanish, on average, take it less because they're more acclimatized, but they're still, you know, the Cubans are the ones that are uh, native here. Um, the U.S. can start mounting up, yeah, starting on turn five. So the first four turns on, but they get to the point where 
until like seven and eight, they're going to lose a minimum of one step for each of those turns, and maybe two. Turn nine and ten, they like, can lose. Here, see it down here. Two or three. <laughs> two or three. So they're going to start taking enough losses. And where is that U.S. withdrawal table? So once they get up to 10 losses, 10 steps, you're rolling each turn, there's a one in six chance they're going to have to withdraw. Once it's up to 19, each turn, five or six. Four, five or six at 23 plus. So if the Americans don't lose any actual combat casualties, uh, and they roll bad on the yellow fever table, they still might not have their full 14 to 15 turns to, to complete this thing. Now, if they roll lucky and they roll the lowest, and maybe just have a few casualties, you know, they can do it. So they're, 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 the odds there that they'll be able to stick around through 15 turns and not have to withdraw, you know, there's there's they can always roll lucky on that withdrawal chart. You know, even on that 23, there's only a 50-50 chance, but... That's pretty kind of swiggy, that, that that luck there. But, you know, disease is a real thing. Um, but, boy, that would be really disappointing, though, to be kicking butt and almost on the edge of, you know, being able to succeed. And then, whop, there you go. Too much yellow fever and you're withdrawn. So, all right, we're at 46 minutes. I'm going to just talk about real quick here. Uh, and I'm not going to do the whole Spanish move. I'm going to do just looking at this. Now, Americans are on the beachhead. All their units, except for Teddy. Teddy could move four, but, you know, if he's by himself out there, he's going to get killed. Um, they all move two. There's a river right here. It costs plus one to move across the river. They can go this way. <laughs> one, two, or one, two. Or one, two. There's the, the river comes, there's a one, two to here. So the first turn, that's as far as they can move. Unless there is a thing called column movement. I believe they use that term. Where if you do not move next to an enemy unit, column movement, you can double your movement factor as long as you do not start, pass through, or end your move in any hex immediately adjacent to one or more enemy units. The presence of friendly units in such enemy actions do not serve to negate that purpose. Um, so you, you know, what we would say in a normal game if there was zone of controls is you may not enter a zone of control. Uh, you may not start or enter, and if you, you know, move freely, never being in a zone of control, you can double your movement. So Getting off the beach here with this wide open area, four, that's important. You know, they can go one, two, three, or one, two, three. They couldn't get across that river. This is a bridge here. Um, well, it's it's assumed. There's only one picture of a bridge here. This, this railroad across this river here. But the the... Uh, do they actually have bridge on the mm, 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 the train effects chart over there? I do not see bridge. They do say road. When moving across road connected hex sides, regardless of train type, only cost one. So I'm a saying, I'm a saying, you know, that, 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 you know, all these roads and railroads, you can move across those streams. There are bridges there. Now, what is there? I can't remember if the rules actually said something about a bridge. Bridges or fords or something. I can't remember. Uh, 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 movement. Yes, that makes sense. Rail, railroad movement. Da, 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 da. There's, no, there's no rail movement per se. Rails and roads are the same for all purposes, like you move one movement cost along them. So regardless of the other terrain in there, as long as you're moving along them and the U S can trace supply, if they can trace the road or the rail back to their logistical base marker, then units within two spaces 
of a rare road or railroad that can trace back there are in supply. Uh, oh, yeah, here's a sentence. Units may move individually or in, as stacks. Well, again, uh, units crossing rivers via fords or bridges. Ignore the additional hexide costs for crossing a river. So, well, there's only one thing that looks like a bridge, and it's not on the train effects chart. Um, there's nothing on here that looks like a Ford. I don't know if in the original version of the game there were Fords, which would be a way to cross. Let's see, like, you know, if there was a Ford here, then, oh, I could cross. But according to the rules for road or railroad, if you're moving along it, you ignore the other terrain cost. So whether that's a bridge or a Ford, or it's a road that's going across a river, you're fine. It's only going to cost you one movement point. Um, but that's not explicitly stated, and the fact that they say fords or bridges, and it's not on the train effects chart, and there's only one thing that looks like... Again, underdeveloped, under-edited, under-proofread, you know, it's like, uh, dudes. So, anyway, back to all this. So if they could move four by not earning a zone of control, one of the guys that's two doubled, one, two, three, four. They could get across here. They could get, you know, one, two, three, four. All right, one, two, three, four. They could they could get here. So the Spanish history, the Americans remember they just landed. The Spanish, the obvious thing to do is to move up. Like one, two, three, four. Or they could go one, two, three, four. They could use the, the road. The Americans, because of that. It's like, oh my god, he's weak. He's going to get attacked and killed. No, he's not, because they can't get next to him now. Because <laughs> they're only going to go one, two, <laughs> or one, two, or one, two, or starting to go this way, one, two, crossing it. But you know, it's like, yeah, you're having to go backwards to follow the rail. That very first turn, I think it'll go way back to here, going backwards, but that doesn't really help them. So they're going to they're gonna come across here. Now, a guy could come up this way, so I'm going to move another dude here. Oh, let's see here. Now, the Spanish could do the same thing. They could elect to... Now, they don't want to be here where they could get attacked. So they don't want to be here. But if we move a dude up to here or say here, then they couldn't even go one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. So if he goes... Uh, one, two, three, he's doubling it four. He comes to here. One, two, three, he can't come here. He go one, two, three, couldn't come to there. So they could, they could double move back to here. <laughs> they could move to these here. Guy could move to here too normally anyway, but couldn't go to here, here. So they can't be attacked. And so next turn they could run back. Right, but they're slowing down the Americans just by moving up enough, so they can't come charging out and call a movement. They can only get this far. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, these other guys can just quit now. Yeah, I'm not going to do all this. These these guys might run this way, or some of them to like. Ah, are we going to be able to take back? Zoom out a little bit. Get a little bigger picture there. <laughs> Santiago's been taken. These guys are out of supply. Supply does not affect movement, even though one place in the rules talked about supply for movement and combat. It's only combat. There's that clarification in the errata. Um, but yeah, what, what are the Spanish going to do over here? Are they going to be able to <laughs> get back in here? There's nine with an entrenchment. These are Redoubts, uh, yeah, they're all out of supply. They're attacking at have. <laughs> ah, brutal, brutal. Now, they do have a leader. They do have a leader. So maybe maybe they can get their butt back into Santiago. I don't know. We'll have to see. But not now. 54 minutes. So, Manning Mike, Man Cave of Madness. Uh, basically, 95% rules have been explained. You know, we talked about... The yellow fever, we talked about possible withdrawal, tracking the U.S. casualties. Uh, 
I mentioned last time, uh, there's the, the thing about U.S. in the jungle can get lost, and there's uh, the, the, the balloon unit, the balloon unit, the singles detachment can give them bonus to be less likely to be lost. Same with Cuban units next to them, but so, I mean, that's been explained enough. There, there is historical event table, um, which actually, technically, is there no historical event on the first turn, or should we have rolled the first turn? There's no victory check on the first turn. Administrative phase skip on turn one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no, no. So there's no. Victory check, there's no yellow fever check, which is skipped on turns one to four anyway, but roll for historic events some point after the yellow fever check, since we're skipping uh, the administrative phase on turn one, there is no roll for a historical event. So, All right, folks, that's it. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll probably do a follow-up. Uh, you know, what, what, what happened if the Cubans... Uh, hold in Santiago and the Spanish can't take it, I'll I'll just stop there and later sometime I'll I'll play a a, a free setup game. But this, this first first game of this learning game looks like it might be a short one and uh, historical setup may be of historical interest, but why well, not not for gameplay purposes. Um yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Mandarin Mike, Man Cave of Madness, Teddy Roosevelt has landed, but the Cubans are winning the day. And again, the Cubans have four or five victory spots, but I'm really pretty certain it's the U.S. that has to control them to start rolling on that Spanish surrender table. The U.S. player controls four or more. See, the, the Cubans are played by the U.S. player, but I really think they have to be controlled by U.S. forces. But, you know, it just, it really doesn't say that, which makes it even worse. Um... You know, I'm going to say that the U.S. The, there's all these markers right here, right? These are U.S. control markers. All right, U.S. flag. I think the U.S. troops have to get in there. Um, otherwise, yeah, you, <laughs> we'd be rolling the beginning of turn two. Let's say the Spanish don't take anything back. They'd have five objectives. Uh, they don't have Alcani. So they could roll a six and get the Alas Harcias effect, which means to the rigging, which means the Spanish Navy uh, boogers out. And from then on, they'd be adding plus one to the die roll. And you, know, you could roll another six the next turn, and the game would be over. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think the U.S. has to control those. But that's how we're playing. Anyway, so wow, it is before one hour. Meandering Mike, Man Cave of Madness. This has been Santiago Campaign 1898. Design Javier Romero, who did like 20 years ago, the first edition. This was, quote unquote, totally redeveloped by uh, Ty Bamba and Robert Smith. Uh, Make sure you get the errata, read the errata, realize the great extent to which the sequence of play is totally different than it's in the book. Figure out all the implications of, you know, what I've talked about of how the game plays differently than it first sounded in the rules. Um, and uh, don't play the historical setup without some modification. <laughs> Make sure if you're going to play the game that the Spanish can actually protect whether they, you know, can take a certain number of, of these units out here, as long as they have to have, say, one in each of these three cities or something, and the rest 
can be done over here or with these two guys. One of them can be in those hexes. The other one should be up there. Something like that. Um, oh, my, my, while I'm mentioning it, in the historical setup, this unit did not have an allocation. Okay, so so normally in the non-historical set, all the U.S. guys are just they're a big pool of forces to come on. In the historical setup, they talk about turns one through four. These guys, and then starting on turn three, these guys that can come on in either place, either here if it's controlled or there. Whereas this first stack has to land here. But so I'm gonna say this guy. Uh, we'll just come on at the end. After everyone else has come in, he'll come in <laughs> wherever. But he was not. It was not allocated in the historical setup. So, anyway, for over an hour, <laughs> over an hour, meandering Mike, man cave of madness, totally done now. Paper Wars one hundred two, Santiago campaign from Compass Games. Like I said, I'm not bashing Compass Games. I like a lot of Compass Games. But the magazine games are underdeveloped. They need to they need to change their process. There, I'm gonna say it. Some, something needs to change somewhere. So the buck has to stop somewhere. All right. Take care of you all. Enjoy your games. And ciao.